Well, it has been a long time. Welcome back to the truck. Out here, it's nice and cool tonight. It's not hot like it has been all summer. It's pretty nice. Pretty enjoyable. Free to come out here and sing some songs and maybe talk to y'all for a little while. So here I am, talking to you. What are you up to? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Hope everything's going well. Hope the family's good. Hope the extended family's good. Hope all the family's good because we are all one family. We have one father, one mother, one brother, one trinity who loves us, gave himself up for us in the redemptive act of the cross, which is something that I want to address. I want to talk a little bit about the cross and salvation, justification, the things that we flippantly speak on every day that we move into the church realm. We go into our buildings and we talk about what we must do to be saved. That is the question on everyone's mind. Like the jailer who was getting ready to kill himself when Paul and Silas sang in the spirit and the whole jail was shaken. The place was made free. Every jail cell was opened by the active spirit moving through Paul and Silas. They sang worship and the God that dwells within them came out and dwelled in the jail and freed every prisoner and wrote the death sentence of that jailer. But it really wasn't a death sentence at all. <clears throat> In Roman law, if you are commanded to keep a person, then if that person gets free, whatever judgment that they were supposed to receive, you receive. So that jailer was getting ready to kill himself because there was a lot of murderers in his jail. And he figured, man, I'm screwed. I better go ahead and stick my sword in my stomach, get this over with, because Caesar's going to have my head for this. At least I'm not getting fed to lions. Go ahead and take myself out. And Paul called out and said, don't hurt yourself. Everybody's still here, buddy. Just relax. And that really screwed up that man's theology. And he stopped and he's like, whoa, I won't kill myself. Hey, Paul, tell me more about this Jesus guy you've been talking about. I heard you singing. When you got to that one stanza, bam, the whole place started shaking. So why don't you tell me about this trinity, this father, mother, and son that say they want me to be a part of their family and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And the religious mind hears that and says, those are the only ways for you to be saved. Believe, you have to believe or you're not saved. It gives you something to do, believe. How's that working out for you? Can you believe? Or when revelation comes, do you freely believe? See, it's not a matter of you working up belief or working up faith. It is a matter of Christ crucified, buried, and resurrected. Something was done without your consent. Just as Adam Screw the pooch, per se, causing Christ to become incarnate and walking among, among us in flesh. 
so he could be the natural human response perfectly to the Trinity, to the Father, knowing fully who he was, where he came from, and where he was going. Unlike us, Jesus did it perfectly. And I mean not that we don't do it perfectly. I'm saying that he knew something that we don't quite remember. He knew who he was, where he came from, and where he was going. And that is something that is lacking in our preaching today. People don't know who they are. There is a severe identity crisis within the church, and it's mirrored in the world. Religion has re-preached the devil into power, sin into strength, and the law to its pinnacle of importance, and caused people to question who they are. They've moved to scientism, and Darwinism, and anything to get out of the mindset that all I am is hell fodder an evil sinner, that the devil is my father, that I was born sinful and I'm evil incarnate unless I jump through the hoop and say this prayer. Surely I'm not from God. That is what religion has told us since we were babes. We come out of the womb. Immediately, somebody's there to Tell us that we're liars and cheats and thieves and evil and horrible and bad and not good. And you're definitely not righteous. You're clearly not holy. You suck. And there's nothing you can do about it. Except pray this prayer. Do these things. Then and only then will God be pleased to accept you back into the club because God had to beat Jesus up because he was so pissed off at you. Of course, that penal atonement theory is bullcrap. <sighs> Thinking that God had to beat up Jesus will first of all make Jesus not God. And that would make Jesus's cross useless and that would mean that you aren't saved but that's not the case Jesus Christ is God and it was God in Christ reconciling himself unto the world making sure that you remember who you really are you are God kind you are the children of your father you are from God you are going to God And you are the children of God. There's so much talked today about what you must do to be saved. And I can just go ahead and tell you, there's nothing you can do. You were drowning. Jesus was the lifeguard. You were faltering in your darkness. Jesus is the light. He became sin. He became sin. And sin was removed from you at the cross. You have lived out of a false identity probably your whole life. Because nobody ever told you you were righteous or holy or perfect. Good. You are good. You are the children of your father, Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Tiskanu. You are the children of the Most High God, the Lord of hosts. The Holy Spirit is your mother. God Almighty is your Father, and Jesus Christ is your brother. You are 
saved, sanctified, and filled with the Trinity. And there's nothing you can do about it. Now, that is the objective truth. The truth is the cross accomplished exactly what it meant to accomplish. But the subjective realities that we live within, the ideas that we hold on to, the falsehoods, the falsities, the religious lies, the horrible belief structures that we have been handed down from generation to generation is that you must do to become. If you will, then you can. If you, then he. Because God is impotent and cannot accomplish anything without you. Well, first of all, that would make you God. And you're not God. You are the children of God, but you are not God's daddy, and you ain't his mama. Sorry. hate that for you. You're not that powerful. Now, believing comes as the Holy Spirit who is within you brings revelation. And that revelation is the faith of Christ who is already within you. He's already set up shop. He already accomplished what he meant to accomplish. If you were born beyond the cross, you are in Christ and Christ is in you. What happened at the cross was something that is to remind all of the cosmos that God is the originator of the human race. And that our false identities, our darkness, our evil was destroyed in the servant body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God didn't even need that. He didn't need us to kill Jesus. We killed Jesus. He let us have our way. That is how good God is. And he used that very wrong action to save the entire cosmos. He took death in, he took sin in, and he destroyed it. And he emanated righteousness and light and goodness to all. The whole of the cosmos, everyone born from him, everyone born after the cross, Everyone before the cross he preached to in a hidden way. As Peter says, as he descended into, as he descended into hell and preached to those spirits, Jesus accomplished exactly what he meant to accomplish. And you and I and everybody have already been sucked in to that wound in his side, to those wounds in his hand, to those wounds in his feet, to those holes in his scalp from the thorns. We were represented in him and we are representatives of him now. But that's the trick. You still think you are you. But you're not you. You're in Christ. You're not gay. You're not straight. You're not an adulterer. You're not a murderer. You're not a liar. You're not all those things that you think you are. You're in Christ. You are in Christ. That is the objective truth. Your thoughts about what you think you are are all subjective. Those are all subjective truths. Even your identity. <clears throat> you know the fun thing about identity is you are probably the only person who thinks exactly like you think. You are the only person who sees yourself the way you see yourself. You 
have an identity in the eyes of other people that doesn't even exist to you. Did you know that? There are thousands of people that you come into contact with every year who look at you and have a whole personality, a whole mindset, a whole idea, a whole way of being that is attached to you that has absolutely nothing to do with who you actually are. You, you do the same thing yourself. When you go out and you see people and you think all of these strange thoughts about people and who they are and what they are to you and how they've done this and how they've done that and who they really, who they really are. And none of those things are real either. That's just what you think. And it is subjective and it is not reality. But there is an ultimate reality outside of the matrix of your thought life that is truth and is not subjective and it cannot be changed because God cannot be changed and you are in the Trinity. Your reality is so secure. Your salvation is so sure that there is nothing that you can do about it because God has actually got the power to save all of humanity by himself. And he doesn't need your help. You believing it will help you. But that will only happen as the revelation comes from the Holy Spirit. And that faith is the faith of the Son of God. And that is only when Jesus Christ believes through you. You can't work up any faith. You can't make this thing happen on your own. You are simply a vessel to enjoy the goodness of God. A pleasant bystander. A happy, enjoying person who gets to take in all the spoils and enjoy all of the already accomplished works. That is the Sabbath. It is the rest of all things done. And you are in the Sabbath. Jesus Christ is the Sabbath. There is a rest that you can enter into. But you can't even get yourself there. It is God who will bring you into that rest. I have a lot more to say. I have a lot more to do. I want to keep on talking about this, but I think that's enough for tonight. Uh, as I said, it's cooling off here in North Carolina. It's getting a little chilly at night and cooler during the day and that's good because football practice has started up and nobody wants to sit out in the heat oh there goes my sunshine here's my lights turn it back on the danger of being in a truck everybody sometimes your lights turn off i uh just want to say i appreciate you thanks for coming out thanks for listening uh I love you. God loves you. Jesus is already in you. Even if you don't believe it. Even if you don't know it. Even if you can't trust nobody. Especially not that God is always pissed off with everybody trying to throw light at boats and such. That's not God, by the way. Either way, I uh, just wanted to say bless you. Uh, school started today down here in the Carolinas. Pray for all the students. Have a safe year. Safety throughout the nation. Not just safety, but worth. I pray worth on every child's heart. That they feel worthy and not lacking. 
pray that worth, that they would feel their worth and they would know the worth of those around them and they would not feel like life is unimportant and something that can easily be taken with no repercussions. Because James said, how can you curse the man who was made in the very image of God and think that you're blessing God? I, James understood that God was walking around on the planet in these temples. Even if they didn't realize he was in them. I pray that no one gets hurt this year just because school's in. That's my prayer. Pray for America. I love this country. I'm not a nationalist by any stretch of the imagination. I have no faith in government, if that's your case, uh, or thought life or process. But I do love this country, and I appreciate all that have come before me and all that will hopefully be here when I'm gone. I hope that they have the same freedom to sit in random trucks and talk about Jesus without having people show up with AK-47s and try to slit my throat, cut my head off, crucify and or burn me at the stake for saying that Jesus Christ is Lord because he is Lord. And this here is a freedom that there are very few countries left that it is not impeded or talked down upon or outright outlawed. So, God bless America. And bless God America. Yeah, so, just wanted to say once again, thanks for coming to the truck. Thanks for hanging out with me. Got a new phone. I don't know about this whole video process. Do I look good? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I always like the black and white videos because you can't see all my, you know, imperfections. Plus, it makes me feel more distinguished. Of course, I'm just a big nerd, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, I love you. I appreciate you. Signing off. Dusty Harrison from the truck. Words from the truck. Hopefully we'll pick this up uh, a little more next time. Love you. Bye-bye.